I was realizing that now that we're putting this on Zoom, um, I have to consider what my outfit is. Um, I'm not, you know, much into fashion, and, and I just wear whatever is kind of on the top. But I have to be careful now that I'm not wearing the same outfit every week because it's being recorded. So <clears throat> the first step of meditation, as you know, is to turn off your cell phone. And uh, the last step is to remember to turn it back on. <clears throat> Um, so we're going to sit for 40 minutes. Um, Chris, is that going to be unusually long for you? Awesome. Okay. So we'll start by finding our meditation posture. And <clears throat> as I said last week, it's really, you know, when you're on a long retreat, the postures, all these nuances, the posture get pretty important. For a 40 minute set, there's really just two things that matter. You want to be comfortable enough that you won't need to go anywhere, and not so comfortable that you'll fall asleep. So if you do start getting sleepy, <clears throat> you can change your posture to be more alert, to be more uncomfortable. And we'll start this week as we did last week. <clears throat> putting the attention on the breath. We won't always start this way, but we'll usually start this way. You'll probably find the breath easiest in your nose. But if it's easier somewhere else, it's fine to go there. And I'll remind you of a few of the tricks from last week. The first is don't try to block anything out, especially don't try to block out your thinking. Any attempt to stop thinking makes your thinking a lot louder. So I always love teaching in this urban environment here because it's pretty loud. Right now I hear somebody wheeling a cart, it sounds like. And it's very easy to just ignore that. All the people on the street obviously have nothing to do with us. Doesn't matter what noise they're making. This is exactly how we want to treat the thoughts. Loud thoughts, quiet thoughts, sane thoughts, insane thoughts, spiritual thoughts, offensive thoughts, doesn't matter. Just try to treat them like noise. And then I'll prevent trying to turn them off. So that's one trick for stable attention. And the other is playing with the level of effort. So you can go to both extremes. <clears throat> Try like really grabbing the breath. And I find I do get good attention, but my head hurts. And it kind of sucks and it's not very stable. And then try the other end of the spectrum. Just relax. And then see where that balance point of effort is. <clears throat> too little gets distracted, too much gets distracted. With another hint being that level of balanced effort is probably less effort than you're thinking. There are people in the world who trend lazy. For whatever reason, they don't tend to come to my meditation classes very often. For whatever reason, most of the people here tend to trend intense.
And we'll spend a few more minutes focusing on the breath.
<clears throat> so, in Theravada Buddhism, two of the primary forms of meditation are shamatha and vipassana. Shamatha is a, involves an artificial stabilization of phenomena. So this is what we do when we look at the breath. We focus on the breath in a way that makes it appear stable. What we're going to try next is moving to a Vipassana practice. This practice is harder. So if you find you're getting super lost, go back to the breath. If at some point you seem pretty stable, come back to Vipassana. There are lots and lots of Vipassana techniques. Really any technique that involves deconstructing your sensory phenomena probably counts. So the one we'll do tonight is called Choiceless Awareness. So the instructions before were focus on the breath, leave everything else in the background. What I'd like you to do is, if something really seems pointless, uh, thoughts about dinner and so on, stay on the breath, leave in the background. If something seems interesting, put it in the foreground and see what it's composed of. And it's this different way of looking. When we look at the breath, we don't try to break it into tiny little pieces. That makes it pretty unstable. It's not a forceful practice. You're not like using effort to pull apart sense phenomena. That'll probably just leave you frustrated and distracted. It's actually a way of looking. The, the same way you could look at the carpet and see the carpet. You look at the carpet closely to see each little pattern and each little piece of dirt and imperfection in the weaving and so on. You don't have to move. You don't have to metaphorically get closer to the carpet. It's like just a different way of looking to see the carpet or to look at its constituents. So, if nothing seems particularly interesting in your sense experience, stay with the breath. If you're focusing on something interesting and it disappears, go back to the breath. And if you suddenly realize you don't know what you're doing, you're just lost, come back to the breath. So this will vary. For some people, this might actually be a lot of breath practice. And for others, you might be moving around a lot or staying on some other sensation a lot. Focusing on thoughts is really hard. So if you don't have experience with that, I would suggest ignoring thoughts. And so that'll have you focusing mostly on body sensations, or maybe you could try focusing on mental images. Thoughts are the hardest. Images are in the middle in that if they start turning into like trippy visuals and getting real interesting, you might want to drop them. The easiest thing to focus on is the body sensations. So for instance, I'm focusing on the breath and there's some kind of like, it's like a bulging tightness I feel in my chest. And so I'm gonna bring my attention there I say, hey, what's going on here? I'm investigating the sensation. We can hear a loud truck now for those here in the room. 
And it's actually fine to do this with external phenomena, although the truck just shut off. The way that you do this with the outside phenomena is you hear the truck, and of course you picture a truck, and maybe you picture the driver, and drop everything other than the direct sensory experience. Okay, there's the sound of a truck. What is that made of? What's the nature of the sound of a truck? Maybe an easier question is, uh, what happens when I inspect this sense phenomenon? I like that. What happens when I inspect it? And you can maybe see what I mean about this being harder. And if you're trying to focus on the breath and you get lost, you'll immediately be able to tell whether you're on the breath or not once you wake up. Once you come back to mindfulness. In this case, not necessarily. Your attention can be basically anywhere. So it's easier to get lost, harder to identify that you're lost. If your mind's pretty scattered, go back to the breath. Either stay there the whole time, or stay there until your mind feels more put together, less scattered. We're going to have this loud outside sound for a minute here. One cool thing to look at is the beginning and particularly the end of the sound.
And for the last part of the meditation, I'll add one other instruction. Uh, feel free to ignore it if you don't like it. But I think particularly if uh, you're struggling to focus on the Vipassana, this can make it easier. The last instruction is approximately every two seconds in your head, say the name of whatever you're focusing on. It's good to use a pretty specific name if you can. So it might just be the breath and then you say breath in your head. Might be like tension and you say tension and as you look at the tension more, maybe it starts to look like anger. That's a good label. As you look at it more, maybe it's anger at someone or something. So I like to use all these two second rules here, which is in your head, just say the name of whatever you're focusing on approximately every two seconds. Don't spend more than two seconds coming up with the label. Then you wind up thinking too much about an experience that isn't happening anymore. And the label itself should be specific, but, but pretty short. Just a name of a thing, rather than like a paragraph about the thing. If you really have no idea what the thing is called, I just say pass, like I'm on a game show and I don't know the answer. And so that the labels don't become one more piece of mental talk, you can try labeling in a sort of bland voice. Breath, tension, relaxation. And because thoughts are pretty hard to work with, if your attention's on thoughts, I'd probably actually keep the label pretty vague. If your attention's on thoughts, I would just label it thought.
everybody. Would you mind hitting stop on the recording? Bye, Internet.